Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make an American Apparel inspired t-shirt romper. First, trace the front and back of a pair of shorts that fit you. If the waist is elasticated, add about 2 inches to the waist of the pattern pieces. For the seam allowances, I added 3 quarters of an inch for the waist and leg holes, 1 half inch for the curve and inseam, and no seam allowance for the sides for both front and back pieces. The stretch of the fabric should go horizontally across the pattern. Next, take a shirt that fits you and trace around the front half of it, minus the neckband and the sleeves. For the seam allowances, the bottom of the shirt is 3 quarters of an inch, the sides and armholes are 1 half inch, and the neck hole is 1 quarter of an inch. Then you do the same for the back of the shirt. The stretch goes horizontally across the body. And then I measured 4 inches from the neck hole to indicate where the slit is for the butt enclosure later on. Next, trace a sleeve. The top of the sleeve is labeled fold because the pattern will be cut on fold and the rest of the sides should have one half inch seam allowances. The dimensions of the button loops are an inch by two inches with the most stretch on the longest side. I wrote to cut out three, but it should be four. Next, fold your fabric, making sure that the stretch is going perpendicular to the fold and then place the front shirt pattern piece with the part marked fold on the folded edge. Then you cut around the pattern. Do the same thing for the back piece. Then cut two sleeves on fold. Next, on two layers of fabric with right sides together, Place the two short pattern pieces next to each other so that their sides line up. Then cut around the pattern so that you get two massive pieces for the shorts. I did this because I didn't want side seams on my shorts. Then cut out four rectangles for the button loops. I recommend making them an inch by three inches instead of two inches so that you have more room for the seam allowance. I also cut out two pieces of fabric as facing for the back to stabilize the buttons and also the loops. I made them one and a half inches by four inches. Lay the two shorts pieces right sides together and sew along the curves on the side using a straight stitch. After that, grab the center of each layer and flip it so that the seams meet in the middle. Then align the inseams and sew a straight stitch. As for the shirt part, pin and sew the shoulders using a straight stitch, then get your sleeve pieces and mark the middle fold of their curves. First, pin the middle of the sleeve to the middle of the armhole, right sides together. Then line up the pieces and pin along the edges. You don't need to stretch anything, just pin carefully, then sew using a straight stitch. Next, fold the back shirt piece and cut down 4 inches from the neckline. After that, with right sides together, pin along the sides of the shirt, then sew both sides using a straight stitch. Next, we need to cut out a neckband, so first measure the length by walking the tape measure along the neck opening. Mine was 18 inches, then I subtracted 3 inches, so my neckband should be 15 inches in width and as for the height i chose to make mine two inches you can get away with only subtracting two inches or maybe you need to subtract four it all depends on how stretchy your fabric is next mark the center of the front using a pin then line up the front and back of the neck hole and place a pin at each of the folds near the shoulder After that, fold the neckband wrong sides together, fold it in half horizontally, and mark the middle with a pin. Fold in the sides towards the center pin and place a pin in each of the folds. Mm -hmm. 
also place a pin about half an inch from each end. To sew the neckband, line up the center pins and stretch the neckband to the next pin as you sew them together using a straight stitch. Then stretch the last neckband pin to the edge of the back slit and then sew. Do it to the other side as well. This ensures that there's even tension along the neckband so that it lays nicely on your collarbone. It should look like this. Next, I decided to sew a zigzag stitch right under the neckband and I also hemmed the armholes using a zigzag stitch to allow for stretching. Then, pin a facing to the right edge of the slit, right sides together, and sew only along the facing with a straight stitch. Then, fold the piece over. Also tuck in the seam allowance of the neckband. Then you top stitch all the way from the neckband down to the very bottom of the slit. To make a button loop, Fold each of the sides to the middle of the strip, then fold in half long ways one more time. Then you sew. Then make it into a loop and sew the ends together just like this. Place the button loops face down on the left side with the raw edges closest to the edge of the slit. Then place the other facing piece right on top. Pin securely by pinning both the loops and the spaces between them and sew using a straight stitch but only on the facing. Then flip the facing to the inside and top stitch it all the way down after you tuck in the seam allowance of the neckband and tuck in a little button loop in that space. After that, turn your shirt inside out and tuck the shorts in the shirt right sides together. I marked the sides of the shorts with pins and lined those up with the shirt's side seams. Pin around and sew using a straight stitch, making sure to have your 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance for your elastic. Next, pin the seam allowance down on the shorts and pin. This creates a casing for the elastic. Go slowly when sewing to catch both the layers of the seam allowance. Leave an inch gap to insert the elastic. The width of my elastic was I think 5 eighths of an inch or maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm not too sure, I don't remember, but I will have it in the description box. Cut a piece of elastic that fits comfortably around your waist and attach a safety pin to one end. Then feed the elastic through the casing. When you finally get to the other end, sew the ends of the elastic together using a zigzag stitch. These are the buttons that I used and I got them from Joanne Fabrics. When choosing a button, make sure that they're the raised ones and not the flat ones with the holes. Mark where to place the buttons using a chalk. Then sew the buttons using a needle and some thread. 